So we thought we'd bring Steve in. You've been listening to us as we've been filming this, and in between you've been asking some questions. We've talked about, you know, the what is the kerygma? The kerygma is the essence of the gospel. The gospel's power. Um, we've talked about how this can come up in a conversation. Um, you've been watching and listening. Uh, what what comes in our minds that we would want to use as a way to further unpack this for the guys right now? Well, I think. One thing that strikes me all the time as a, as a father, as a husband, as a you know, man in the, in the world is not just the response, but the response with regard to particular people that I know and love most dearly. And I've watched, as all of us have, many of our, our own family, whether it's cousins, siblings, others, turn away from the faith. Okay, so to go back to the last video where you guys were referencing like, your life in November 1944. I feel like not only is it 19, November 1944, but I'm just watching a lot of people get gunned down. And I'm like, I, I feel like I can't just sit there and do nothing, right? I have to not only respond, but if they tell me, hey, not interested, am I just supposed to be that passive? Am I just supposed right. to Great question. And you know how how because most of us have kids who've turned right. away, Father. So I say two things. First of all, so we were talking offline before we started filming. This is, we're talking about like creating a toolbox. It is so important to not presume that what we're doing right now is simply to show us how to do this for the sake of others. I do not, for my life, think that everybody who's watching this right now has been overwhelmed by the gospel yet. So the, 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 this is for us. First, okay, so the response we're talking about is our response. Like, so mm -hmm. I shared with you early on, like, 23 years ordained, 53 years old. You're 53 years old. I've I feel like the Lord's taught me more about this in the last year than I've ever learned in my life, and I am overwhelmed continually when I pray with this. So my life's different. So this isn't just for the sake of others. This is for us first, and. And I'm not going to be able to share it effectively unless I know this myself as opposed to I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the third party again? I forgot. Like, we, we need to know this because it's our experience, okay? So that's the first thing. That's really important. Uh, most people who come to church have not been overwhelmed by the gospel. And they're a church. Most people at the men's group have not been overwhelmed by the gospel. And you got up at 6 in the morning. Or you're here at 6 in the morning. You got up earlier than that. Give it 5 up. So that's the first thing. As for the people that we love, so we all love people, right? But who have uh, more or less flipped us off and said, you know, hey, thanks, old man, but I ain't interested in listening to that. Well, um, at least the way I would look at it would be something like this. To, um, if you continue to simply do the same thing over and over and over and over again, and you expect something different to happen, you are a moron. Right. Mm -hmm. to, to change that, is not to be passive. It's to be intelligent. So I'm trying a technique, or I'm trying a strategy that didn't work. Um, I'm going to try another strategy. <laughs> the next strategy might be as simple as shut up. Really, right? So like, shut up. If 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 I I, I cannot. Sh there are people when I walk into church, they go, oh, it's him. I, I cannot effectively communicate the gospel to them. That's why it ain't all up to me. And there are certain people who will hear you or hear you who are going to hear it well. And there are other people that you are like sandpaper to. And they ain't going to hear you. When we know that, stop rubbing the sand <laughs> or the wood, you know? I mean, like just back off and say, Lord, thank you that you've got somebody in my son, my daughter's life, my wife's life, uh, my, f my brother's life, who you are already, even before the existence of the world, you've arranged to encounter them and to share the gospel. That's not passive. You know? Um, we, so what we do is we pray, and, uh, and then we thank God that you've brought someone else into their orbit. I wish that way for my brother-in-law. I used to, we used to get content. We were contentious as all get out. We'd talk all the time. He wasn't Catholic. And we, you know, he used to ask me, like, how's your job? Like, my job? I don't have a job. You know, and he's like, 
like that. And um, and I'd give it back to him, and we just go at it. And we used to pray for him all the time. And as I was praying one time, I felt like the Lord said, "You know, you're the problem." And I, my sister, his wife, heard me say this one time at some event, and she came up to me. And she goes, "You are. <laughs> you're the problem. Shut up." And I did. I just said, "Okay, I'll shut up." And then, however long later, I mean, like years later he came up to me at some uh, gathering he's um, he's a great brother and uh, he says hey you know I'm talking to I'm talking to Mary a lot lately I'm like cool that's great Mary who like, you know Mary mother of God and inside I'm like you're talking to Mary the mother of God you've hated Mary mother of God you know like wow that's, that's really great so and he becomes Catholic and we've got this great relationship but um but we can be the problem, and we're usually the problem with the people we're closest to, because we want it so much. I think as fathers, we have a calling, a vocation, to lead our families to God. Now, many of us, I'm included in this, have made mistakes as fathers. We all of us, not all many. of us. Yeah, we've missed things. Yep. We didn't know what we didn't know as the children were born, especially you know, very beginning. Maybe we didn't pray with our kids. Right. I know you've shared the example of your own father. Often you saw him praying. Well, most of us probably didn't have that experience. And I didn't illustrate it for my children. Not in that way. Not in that visible way. And then years go by, and even though you may put your kid through Catholic schools and all surround them with the Catholic community, you know, one day they say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. I'm not interested. And I guarantee most of the men watching this on a Wednesday morning have experienced this. And so you struggle with You say sometimes it's shut up, but when you're the father, it doesn't feel like it's supposed to be shut up. Well, it's shut up in the sense of I'm not going to keep doing the same thing with you, and I'm not going to try to choke this into you. So, I mean, I talk. About, I, you, you've heard me say lots and lots of great things about my dad, and my dad is my hero. Um, but my dad and I used to go at it like nothing. And, you know, after he died, especially after my mom died, we found, you know, like all these letters that we wrote back and forth to each other that he had held on to. And so when I was a teenager, especially, my dad and I were like this. And, um, I mean, he didn't have the nickname, but flamethrower for the press for nothing. And that came out at home sometimes. And I saw things in my dad, which I saw in myself, which I couldn't stand. And, I mean, he wasn't a saint. He became one. <laughs> he wasn't born one. And so he grew. And, I, and I'm and i growing. And I share that simply to say, as a dad, especially as a father, like you're continually trying to let the Lord work on you. And, and you grow. So, so for him, I think in his life, he let the Lord mellow him and harness him. And then he realized... So the most powerful example I can give you right now is the example of my life. And maybe when I would have been sharp before, I'm not now. Yep. I'm under control now in a way that I wasn't before. And so we see, so as a child, you know, I see my dad change. Mm -hmm. And that's huge, right? As opposed to obstinate dad just like, well, this is who I am and that's how you're supposed to be. I'm your father. And I, and I saw my dad go through that transformation, and that transformation changed me. That's not passive. Um, to just love, I mean, love gets involved. Love takes risks. Love goes after the one who's lost. But if, so, which means you've got you've to try to make an effort, especially as a dad, right? I'm thinking of so many parents in my mind who've had really painful conversations with kids that they knew weren't going to get received well, and they weren't received well. But they had to get said. And then after I've said it, I'm not just going to say the same thing over and over and over again to you or be afraid. Here's what happens a lot of times to parents. Sounds stupid out loud, but it's what happens. Well, if I don't keep bringing it up, I'm afraid that you're going to think I've suddenly changed and I condone your behavior yeah. now. Well, yeah. what in the world makes you think I'm going to think that about you? Yeah. You've said it, and it was pretty clear. I don't think I've won you to the other side by the mere fact that you're not constantly telling me I shouldn't be sleeping with my boyfriend, you know, or whatever. 
you don't have to worry about that. What you need to do is to share truth in love. And then, if I know you want to talk to me, then we'll keep talking about that particular topic, right? But otherwise, I just keep trying to break in the front door, and you keep bolting it. So, I mean, get more creative. Go around the side door. Try the chimney. Sometimes I find it's best just to lead by action, right? I mean, I think I think the worry, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe if you don't actively talk to that person, you're kind of affirming what they're doing yeah. by, by just loving, right? And, and you're worried about that. But for me, like, just going to adoration or something like that, just a small action that somebody may know, like, oh, he's into his faith, something like that. I think that can be super powerful for for some. There's a guy who gave a talk at uh, Christ the King a couple years ago. Um, it's an awesome line. So he was a atheist, hated Catholics, uh, hated Christians, and um, people were constantly, constantly trying to evangelize him. He was rude, crude, just whatever. And he's now a really devout Catholic. And the expression he used is, uh, love builds a bridge across mm -hmm. which truth can pass. And he says, I am what I am right now because these people built a bridge by loving me even when I was acting in a particular way. And, by the, and, and because they loved me and I couldn't deny it, and they built that bridge when they shared the gospel after the bridge had been completed. It's not like they weren't sharing the gospel before, but their persistence, their kindness, um, their forgiveness... I was finally ready at a certain point to say, okay, this has got to be true because everybody else would have walked away. And that's what we're trying to do with our kids, you know, with those we love. We're trying to build the bridge. You just don't know when the bridge is going to get completed. You can't tell. Hopefully in your lifetime. Yeah, hopefully in your lifetime, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and uh, another, another way that I've kind of looked at it is that your love is like planting that seed, right? It's, it's planting the seed, and when you get into those arguments and you argue and try to convince them of your way and they argue and try to convince you of their way, it's like throwing rocks on the soil. Mm -hmm. And you might, not, you might not see the fruits of that seed. It might not, it might not grow, but it's not, it's, not for you, it's not for you to have that grow, mm -hmm. right? And... You can't guarantee that it's going to grow. Mm -hmm. The only way you can guarantee that it's not going to grow is by never planting it. Right. And is, if you're never going to show love to them, the pe for someone who uh, their child might come out to them as a homosexual and they cut connection off, and they they say, "I don't, I disagree with your lifestyle choice. I can't, ha I can't, I don't want you around at family holiday gatherings and right. things of that nature." Mm -hmm. They're giving up all hope. Right. And by showing love. What you're doing is you're planting those seeds and you're hoping, you're hoping and praying that they will then see the fruits of that seed. Because 20 years on the road, maybe you pass away, maybe you're, maybe you're older, but what's going to happen is one day something else will happen in their life and they'll go back to that and they'll say, I remember that that happened. Right. And all of a sudden that will become the driving force that takes them back to reconciliation. It takes them to church on a Sunday. Right. And whether or not we see that, we can guarantee we won't see it if we don't love. Right. I think it's spot on. Solanus Casey, you know, thank God in advance. One of the most important things, I think, for those that are fathers uh, or for loved ones that we have or spouses, you know, um, the devil's always trying to discourage us. So you just thank God in advance that he's going to win my son or my daughter. I can't see it yet, but I know it. So thank you, Lord, that you're going to do this. You had a question, too, uh, when we were talking before we started yeah, the film. And I, yeah, and I wanted to get to that. Question. Is that um, again, the whole point of this, right, it, we're going over the kerygma, and I think that the kerygma is great, and we've explained it, and we've talked about it, our questions with it in depth here over the last few videos, but in a real-world scenario, right, we're sitting there on the couch watching TV at, on Thanksgiving, we're out and about at dinner, and we're talking with somebody that we know, and it comes up, how, how do you get the kerygma across fully in five, ten minutes, <laughs> You know, yeah. how, how can you condense all, you can't, you can't, you can't condense the scripture, right? That's why we spend our lifetimes reading, reading the gospel every Sunday. So you, it's impossible to fully condense it into five, ten minutes, but how do you 
how do you get this worldview across to somebody in such a brief period of time? Right. I think it's a huge question. So I gave this talk to some folks in Colorado, and a guy came up to me afterwards. So this was like in an hour, and he says, um, and I love this guy a lot. I, I really wanted his opinion. I said, I would love your feedback on that. And he looks at me and says, I'll tell you two things. He says, I think it was the most powerful talk in the gospel I've ever heard in my life. Second, it's not repeatable. And I went, that's helpful to hear. <laughs> So I'm struggling myself. I'm like, it's repeatable for me. I know it. This is me. Mm -hmm. um, I can do this in five minutes. Um, I'm writing a book, actually, um, on it. And then I'm going to try to make a 20-page, like a 15-page 15 pamphlet to be able to give to people so that they have it. Because um, some of this is so foreign to us. We've got to have it codified somehow so that I can read it and digest it. And then I think it's up to us to find ways to interiorize it and to share it. I do think that, you know, so the, the kerygma is the kerygma. It's four, it is four parts, you know, like the goodness of creation, mm -hmm. or the way I put it, why is there something rather than nothing? Um, sin and its consequences, or the way I put it, why is everything so messed up? Um, God's response in Jesus, and then our response to what he's done. So even just as you build your own uh, toolkit, you were saying earlier, of being able to share the kerygma. Okay, so I've got four levels. I've got four trays inside the toolbox. So I know i got to be able to talk about the goodness of creation, sin and its consequences, God's action in Jesus, and then our response. And then there's certain ways that we can build on that that, that are just going to be more natural for us in sharing. The, the, the points are, are important but I obviously pick and choose things when I'm sharing it in five minutes versus when I'm sharing it in five weeks. And you'll do the same. So I'm, I'm hoping that a book and then a booklet will help. Um, I, you know, as you guys hear this talk about it, you'll find your own ways to do it. It's not like you've got to come up with the four points. The four points are there. Um, I'm One of the things that uh, I'm encouraging other guys to do and that I'm doing myself as I'm putting this book together, I'm in. I'm struck by every prayer now at Mass, like the opening prayers, or the closing prayers, or the baptismal prayers, which mention um, things like deliverance from slavery. They jump out at me in a way that never did before. So I was doing a baptism last week for um, um, a set of twins. And in the baptismal rite, um, there's all sorts of different um, options for prayers, you know. And I don't understand this. I've never noticed this before. But so the rite of baptism for one child, the prayers are different than the rite of baptism for several children. And it's more than just the pronoun. So I'm baptizing these kids. And so we're, we're doing the exorcism. Uh, so there's an exorcism for every baptism. And I notice there's an option B. And I look at option B, which isn't there for one child. And usually when I'm baptizing kids, I'm baptizing one child. And I'm like, what is isn't that? So here's the prayer. Almighty God, you sent your only son to rescue us from the slavery of sin. Like, hello! You know? And to give us the freedom only your sons and daughters enjoy. We pray now for these children who will have to face the world with its temptations and fight the devil in all his cunning. Your son died and rose again to save us by his victory over sin and death cleanse these children from the stain of original sin. Like, that's the kerygma. Mm -hmm. Like, in a paragraph. <laughs> right? right? And so, a, a way of just saying, when you go to Mass, like, here's a reason to bring a notebook to Mass or a journal to Mass. When you hear passages or prayers, write them down and go, i got to go back and pray with that. Um, Galatians 4, you know, this passage that uh, where Paul talks about how... Um, God has sent his spirit into us who cries out, Abba, Father. And I usually end there, but I was struck by this the other day. Um, so it says, so through God you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir. Next sentence, formerly, when you did not know God, you were in bondage to beings that by nature are no gods. That's a strong path. I mean, so there's so many texts, right? So as we try to figure out how do we share this, ask the Lord, like, Lord, help me to become ever more sensitive to things that fit into these different trays in the toolbox. 
and then learn a way to share it. And then share it with each other. Like, pick a, pick a Wednesday morning and do this. Oh, like, will. okay, mm-hmm. share the curriculum. You know, I mean, just make make you do it for each other and role play it. And the more we do it with each other, it gets sharper and sharper and sharper. And then you realize, I can shrink this, I can expand it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important because um, what we talked about, you know, it's, the, it's that whole idea that how can you love someone before you love before you love yourself? And that's something that people will say, but in the same kind of way, you know, how this is our response to God. How can we how can we share the kerygma and what humanity's response to God is without knowing the kerygma in our our hearts and living our own response to it? Right. And so when Kevin talks about leading by example, that's what I think of is you know we say our response and like you said earlier it's it's my response and your response and your response and your response right. and when we share this message we can't fully share it until we live it ourselves exactly that's why I don't presume you've been overwhelmed yet if you haven't that's the most that's the most important thing to do right now is to ask the lord lord overwhelm me with what you've done for me 